Welcome back to the madness. K1 GMM Steve in Vermont. And this is going to be hopefully not an exercise in futility. Uh, I had an email from a gent from across the pond regarding an Anon 100D and he was complaining, I can't remember your name, I'm very sorry. Um, but he was complaining about or he was having an issue with the Anon 100 and he is running, it sounds to me like some external rack stuff. And his audio was sounding pinched. And in an Anon, it should not sound pinched. So instead of like before, instead of getting into this email correspondence back and forth, trying to help him out, he asked me for my settings. I'm going to give it to him. <laughs> so this is down and dirty maniac style. And uh, uh, what we're going to do is we're going, I'm going to show you a couple things and I'm going to present some kind of tips and tricks to make these rigs do what you want to or help, help make these rigs do what you want them to do. Hold on. I got a tickle in my throat. I've been having this uh, horrible tickle in my throat for over the past couple days. It's driving me mental. So anyways, let me pop out, pop out the chat here. And this will probably bore many people, but that's okay. Because the beautiful thing is you guys have the choice of not watching it. <laughs> All you have to do is hit the X, hit the X in the top right corner, whatever operating system you're on. And uh, Digital Analog Ham, good evening. And 564, man, good to see you. Hola. So... Um, I'm listening right now to some Canadians and I'm going to show you something on the pan adapter. So let's get over to the pan adapter and this is the Anon 200D and we're going to get into the, the, the nuts and bolts of this. Um, and this is for those of you that maybe are interested in getting into what I would call ESSB audio and really quick. I was thinking today, right? So let me explain this really quick. And what I mean by maniac style is you'll notice that I have so many thoughts going through my brain and I'm not the type of person that can multi, I don't multitask very well, but there's some things I need to address. And when they pop into my head, I'll shift gears quick. And that's why I'm apologizing up front because there's a lot here. There's a lot. So I was thinking today, ESSB, what does that stand for? Most people think of it as what's called extended single sideband, right? Well, yes, that's 100% true. But there's also another abbreviation, another phonetic that goes with the E, and that's enhanced single sideband. Now, what I do with the Anon, in other words, anything that is out of the conventional norm, let's say um, you're running more than 2.8 kilohertz wide, just... Theoretically, uh, that would be extended single sideband, right? Of course, you have double sideband, but extended single sideband is usually associated with um, a more broader audio spectrum being transmitted out of your out of your uh, transmitter. But there is another option here, and that is enhanced single sideband. So you can take conventional super hat or an SDR, let's say you're fixed, like on a 7300 to 2.8 kilohertz wide. Well, I can force the 7300 up to 3.1 kilohertz via brute force. And I can also force it down to about 60 hertz on the bottom end. Now, even at three kilohertz, that's not extended single sideband, but that, that is what I would call enhanced single sideband. And you get some pretty darn good audio out of three kilohertz, 2.8 to three kilohertz. I listened to a guy sometimes, I think he's over in New Hampshire and he runs a TS 590 and he's fixed at like three kilohertz. And I'm telling you, his audio is really good. So that's what I wanted to tell you guys. This not only applies, this is generally, I'm going in the Anon direction. In other words, extended single sideband, but a lot of these principles can be applied to enhanced single sideband. And I coined that, by the way. <laughs> I coined that this afternoon. Nobody steal it. 
And I don't want to see a patent pop up on that either. Anyways, moving on. So, for those of you, those audio aficionados out there that want to bring your audio, there's nothing wrong. I'm just going to say this up front. You're not going to hear me criticize other types of audio, okay? I'm just going to show you some things, and this is kind of interesting. So any of you guys that are running a pan adapter or are thinking about running a pan adapter, and you're looking at the waveform, not the waveform, but the actual audio spectrum of the station you're receiving, let me kick this on and notice his waveform. Now this is the low end right here. Okay, we're on uh, 3785 and this is these, I don't know if they're still here, I'm hoping he is. Um, I'm pulled out to about four kilohertz wide on receive right now on the Anon. So this right hand edge is the low frequency of his audio spectrum. The, the section on the left is his high frequencies of the audio spectrum. If this was upper sideband, this would be reversed, okay? This would be the low side of the frequency spectrum. I'm talking 100 hertz and down. And this would be the upper, the high frequency part. You see where I'm, where I'm going? So the point to this is don't let your eyes deceive you. Um, this is a very good reference but if you listen to the real ESSB guys, you're not gonna, and this is very good audio. I would definitely consider this ESSB. It's not voodoo, but it is really good, really good. Um, and it's very clean. So let me kick this on and I'll show you a couple things. This isn't the guy right here. Une console MIDI, puis je contrôle toute la naine avec ma console MIDI. Ça fait que plus besoin de souris, plus besoin de ça. La seule affaire que je pitonne avec mes... Uh, he may be running 6 kilohertz wide. Uh, prends ça, Pierre. Ah, OK, ben merci. OK, this guy. Ça faisait longtemps, j'avais pas été picoché là-dedans. Euh, je picoche partout, mais pas, pas, pas partout. Fait que c'est ça. C'est pour transmettre. C'est le TX en bas de ton affichage. À okay. gauche, pas à droite. Euh, c'est ça. Où est-ce que c'est marqué 75 mètres? Da, 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 so he's running about probably 6 kilohertz. So I'm going to stretch out a little bit. C'est facile de faire du, euh, du duplex d'abord. Non, nope, he's not 6 kilohertz. So let's go 5 kilohertz. Puis tu te mets, tu le mets à RX2. Yep, so that's 5 kilohertz right there. So he's transmitting 5 kilohertz wide. So let me stop it right. Okay, he was talking right there. So you'll notice his spectrum right here is fairly flat, right? And he's got tons, of, plenty of articulation. Even even with this this rise in the low end, you'll notice this low end. This is probably around 100 hertz. Down here is probably close to 20 hertz. It's very very low. You get into this range right here on the right hand side. That's that's like that guttural voodoo audio type stuff. Um, but he isn't. He's fairly flat with a little bump here. Now, uh, when you listen to this. Um, this is very, very nice broadcast quality audio. What takes it into the like the almost voodoo realm is you'll notice, and I, I wish I had done this later because we would have listened to the guys over in uh, Ohio area that run AK wide that you see me talk to on 3630. Now, those guys, when you see their spectrum show up uh, on the pan adapter, their audio... Um, they've got a huge bump right here and that's what that's and it's and this may be even suppressed down here and yet they're still articulate so the high end may be way down here in the in the low end their low frequencies may be way the heck up here and that's the way my audio is and i'm so the point to this is if you're going for a flat audio let's say dx audio Take this out right here. This is what you want to see. This is very smooth, very good broadcast. It's not shrill. It's not too much in the top end. 
and it's got like a hump through that 500, 800 hertz area. And then he's got a bump probably in the 250, uh, 200 hertz, 250, 300 hertz round, a little bit of warmth right there. And he's got a little bit of bottom. Um, so this is good broadcast quality audio, right? And keep in mind, this is subjective. This is whatever you want to sound like. Uh, but you do have to have the pipes for it, right? You're not going to have a little high squeaky voice and you're not going to sound like I do. Uh, I am a borderline baritone and I just have that boomy voice and it's just the way I am. <laughs> Everybody's made different. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. When you're looking at the pan adapter, don't focus strictly on that. Pay attention to what it sounds like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move over to, hey Peter, how's it going? I'm going to move over to the actual equipment and I'm going to go fast through this because I've already done this before on a previous stream. Um, so, uh, da, 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 da. let me get over here. Hold on. Okay. Uh, so this is what I have running on the Anon and the 7300, except they're two completely different systems running in the same rack. So explain this. Uh, this right here, and I'm gonna try and I'm gonna try and tip it up a little bit. That right there, that little box. Believe it or not, that little box is a thirty dollar preamp. That's an ART MP Studio preamp. Love that little thing, and works really good for for what what I'm doing here with the rigs. So from there, it flows into an equalizer, which is right here. It's a 30 band two channel. Now, what I do is I split the feed. Let's say you've got an Anon. You've got a radio that you use for your Voodoo and ESSB stuff. You can split the feed out of your preamp. Uh, the Anon comes into channel one and the 7300 comes into channel two. Um, and it's gonna get tricky. Uh, so let me just stay on track here. So from there it goes to an Aphex 204. Now I've heard that there are other Aphex exciters and it sounds like my gate, sounds like my, yeah, my gate was a little tight. So, uh, I am monitoring myself through the headphones, so I'm making sure everything's sounding okay. Uh, so from there it goes into the Aphex 204, which is an, uh, an, an oral exciter with what's called optical big bottom. Um, this is what it sounds like without it running. So I just took it out and that's the, uh, if you wanna know what an oral exciter does to your audio, that's what it does. If you anybody listening in headphones, um, anything like that, that is the power of the oral exciter. So I just brought it back in and if you want that voodoo, that monster sound, that, that device will do it. Now this is very minimalist equipment. Some guys go freaking hog wild. I don't have the money to do that. Um, so from the oral exciter, it goes into a compressor limiter uh, expander gate. I do not use the expander. Here's one thing, you do not want to use an expander on your audio in my opinion. And you know what they say about opinions? Um, uh, everybody's got one, they all stink like a toilet bowl. Uh, but that's that's been my experience. Um, the Anon, if I go back over here quickly, really quick, the Anon has a very interesting feature right here. This is a downward expander. You want a downward expander and what that does is you can have fans running all over the place in your shack, a very loud shack, and that will actually suppress that. Um, and it'll make the, the transmitted audio very, very quiet. An expander does the opposite. And you'll notice when you kick an expander in, I mean, it, it'll go hog wild. Uh, the freaking, you know, you'll, you'll hear all kinds of noise in the monitor coming through, ambient noise in your shack. So beware of the expander. Sometimes it's good, eh, other times not so much. Um, I use that primarily for limiting, compression, limiting. I don't do any of that in either of my rigs, okay? This is raw audio processed from the top down, preamp, EQ, Aphex 204. Uh, you want it gated if you can. And then to finish it off, I have a uh, virtualizer 3D. 
And what that does is it provides uh, just a hint of room ambience so that I don't sound like I'm talking into a pillow. And it's a very, very nice, has very nice reverbs and stuff like that in it. Not much, not much, but just a hint. Now, I'll, now I'm going to tell you what you don't need, right? Um, if you want to get into something like this, you could literally buy a decent microphone, a preamp, and an Aphex 204. You wouldn't even need an equalizer into an Anon. You could do a lot of the equalization right in the Anon, and that thing will sound bitching. I'm telling you, it'll work good. So the Aphex is what makes everything happen. Like I said, without that, we can kick that out, and this is what I sound like without the Aphex. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it that still sounds good, you know? I think it sounds great. Um, but, and I'll tell you where I'm going with this. So, oh, what am I, uh, on a loop? Oh, that's great. So, enter a ham radio transceiver, all right? Even in the non- is was never really intended to replace like an AM broadcast station. It was it's just not how they're made. It's it's not what they're intended to do. Now, if you factor in um, uh, propagation, rolling, twisting, bending, refracting, reflecting uh, throughout the ionosphere, uh, you know, from point A to point B. All of us have heard it. If you've been listening stretched out, uh, all my receivers, uh, SDR receivers, are stretched out from 20 hertz to as much as like 10 kilohertz. Um, so I'm hearing everything. And you can hear in the QSB, right? Why is that flipping? Uh, you can hear in the QSB where the low end will just, it'll drop right off and then it'll come back up you know and you could almost hear this like you could almost hear the ionosphere the rolling in the ionosphere and how the signal because even antennas you have to understand even antennas there's a phasing component to multi-element antennas like you could take a three element cubicle quad and if you foobar that bad enough you can actually create audio problems and all of us have heard usually guys on full wave loops and um, multi-element full wave loops, cubicle quads, their audio is freaking monster. And it has, it does have to do with the antenna. A lot has to do with that. So back to the transceiver. Transceivers are never really designed for this. So I had a friend tell me, uh, John, um, what is this called? NU9N. He's in the 3630 group. And, uh, he was watching the stream and he said, um, boy, your audio is different uh, between the stream and the what I'm hearing uh, uh, in my transceiver on the other end. He says, that's amazing. You have to make your audio sound like that before it even hits the transceiver. So that's an example. I call it force feeding. I call it brute force. You got to do it. It's just the way these transceivers are made. Can it be done? Heck yeah, you can do it, but you just have to know how to do it. So here's the nitty gritty as to how I do that. Anybody who's interested in this right now, take your fingers and stick them in your ears. Take your, uh, that, that piece of skin, not your, uh, just above your earlobes, press it in and plug your ears and then talk. You'll notice that you can actually hear, you can hear your own voice. First of all, your vocal cords and your voice box create resonant resonance throughout the bones in your skull and you can actually like I can do it and I can actually feel my bones right here up above my jawbone when I press in and I plug my ears and talk I can feel the vibration and also so so what's the, what am I getting at so here's what I'm getting at if you try to set your audio up and this is coming from decades in the studio environment, music, um, stuff like that, in the, playing in the audio realm, you quickly realize that if you try to EQ something with a set of cans on, right, 
you're hearing, you're actually hearing a mix of what's coming out of the transceiver and you're hearing your own voice through natural resonance through the bones in your head. And that colors what's actually going to the transceiver. So how do you do it without getting a misrepresentation of what's really going to the transceiver? The problem is most people think, well, I'll just crank it up, right? I'll just turn up the freaking monitor. I'll turn it up so loud my freaking ears will ring. Well, the problem is your ears will fatigue in a matter of just a few minutes if you do that. And anybody who's done that before knows exactly what I'm talking about. You end up with ear fatigue, you start to lose, you get attenuation in the high frequencies and everything goes to hell. You start tweaking and you start messing with stuff and it, you can't get it to work. Um, you know, so here's my solution to that. Uh, what I do, and it doesn't matter whether you're on a, seven, a traditional rig or a... Um, like a, a non-flex, whatever you got. I'm just telling you guys how I do it. If you got a better way to do it, do it your way. Uh, but I'm trying to help this guy. And then we're going to get into the actual settings on the Anon, which is going to bore the heck out of everybody. But if you're not bored already. So how I do it is I pipe the audio. I activate the monitor in the software. I shut off the headphones or if I'm monitoring I got some reference monitors with the Polk audio subwoofer for the SSB stuff and it'll freaking I mean it'll crack the plaster on the wall but see I don't want to listen to it that loud so I always use a good pair of headphones I'll kick the monitor on and kill my feed to the headphones now all this is done in the computer so I'll treat I'll deal with the super hat first so let's say you do digital modes right if you do digital modes now you can bring the audio in through the USB codec codec activate that in your computer in your device manager and not device manager in your um, sound card settings and then you can pipe that audio to a program called audacity and there's other programs you can use too um, I'm just telling you how I do it and you can kick the monitor in, you can kill the actual feed to the headphones, and when you talk, you key it up and talk into it, it will grab that audio and it will send it to Audacity at the same stage as when it's being spit out to the freaking um, antenna before it's amplified in the finals and goes into RF and head, heads out into the airwaves. And what you're able to do is then play that back and it's very time consuming, it's labor intensive, and you can tweak and your ears never get fatigued because you're resting. You see what I'm saying? And you're not getting that mixing, trying to tweak on the fly by just using the monitor. I found that if I record it, that gives me a very good representation of what's actually going on over the air. So that's one way I do that. That's about the only way I do it at this point. And the problem is it's so time consuming that I burn out on it. I've pretty much left everything alone for quite a while. Um, I get uh, very good reports from people and um, it's kind of like I've gotten to the point where if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know, so okay, so that's kind of the rundown as to how I go about getting the audio to go out of the transmitter the way I want it to sound. It is not, the, even on the Anon, I will warn you, it is not, it, like I'm monitoring right now for the stream. This is audio before it even hits the Anon. It's coming out of the rack and I use, uh, um, for the guys on the Anons, um, uh, the, the gentleman that sent me the email, he said he's uh, plugged into the front mic, mic input. He's plugged into the back. It's one of those big uh, old serial. Uh, is that what it's called? I don't know how, 26 pin or something. One of those big monsters. I can do that in the back of this and bring the audio direct out of the rack into the back of the radio. That's technically the right way to do it. Um, I personally use an external sound card. So I bring the rack into the sound card and the sound card pipes the audio to the Anon because the software is handling the Anon. Um, it's just very clean that way. And that's, that's just the way I do it. Would I do it into the back? Sure. Should it matter? No, 
it shouldn't matter. But he's got a problem with the audio sounding pinched. So that's why I went through all of this stuff. Um, one thing I wanted to add is be very careful with compression. Uh, I try not to run too much compression because compression, you'll hear it when, when it starts to really flatten that signal out. Uh, it doesn't really, it, I can hear it pinching <clears throat> and you lose some of the dynamics of the audio, but it helps in the QSB. So you have to find a, a happy balance in there. Um, the more dynamic your audio is, if you've got any QSB on the band and you get, a, a, and we all know how the bands are, have been the past year, you get a quick drop over a matter of a couple seconds and one over, um, your signal to drop from like 30 over to like uh, 10 over. I mean, it translates in dB radically. So I try not to use the compression in the Anon. I've done it, and I've had uh, people say right away, they said, oh, your audio doesn't sound the way it did. Um, and I look over, and the compression's on. And it's literally only like 2 to 5 dB of compression. It's very little compression, but they can tell uh, that it's there. It, it's destructive to the audio. Um, if you can do it before it hits the rig, now remember... I'm re this is all being referred to the Anon, and if you're going to play in this in this realm, uh, it's not necessary. But if you want to go down this road, I'm pr giving you as much information as I can possibly think of and all the things that I've ran into. So, brute force. You have to force these rigs to sound the way you want them to sound. Even the Anon. I don't care what anybody says. Um, it's true. They were not designed to do this out of the gate, right out of the box. But they will. The Anon is good, and it will do it. Uh, but you just have to, you have to get it out of your mind that what you sound like, if you're monitoring pre-radio, it's not the way it's going to come out over the air. It's just not. So I think that's pretty much it on that stuff. Um, so I covered like... Uh, getting the audio to audacity it's a free program you can download it online um, there's tutorials on how to set it up just be careful about your monitoring because you're gonna have to monitor with the feed with a microphone active you see what I'm saying so you're gonna have to have a way to actually shut off your headphones unplug them or whatever uh, don't do it through speakers that's not gonna end well unless you can turn down whatever uh, kill your speakers you got a separate volume control that's probably the best way to do it but use if you don't have a good reference system audibly in the room you got to use a good pair of cans um, so and I'm not a big headphone guy I hate headphones but 99% of the time I got them on like right now okay moving on to the Anon so we're gonna head over there and this is a non-specific so anybody looking for information I can't help you <laughs> I can barely help you on the Anon, so here we go. Uh, pan adapter. All right, so I'm going to just roll through some settings here. I do use the EQ, the RX EQ sometimes on the RX side. Uh, that's turned on right here. Uh, by the way, these skins can be downloaded on the W1AEX website. Just type in W1AEX. And his site will pop up and he's got a link to skins that you can install in the roaming directory. Just drop them in the rolling roaming directory. Some work, some don't. I would say most of them work. They have a superhero hero skin that is freaking awesome. I'd love to use it, but I can't get it to work. Um, now, for the Anon guys, I am running Protocol 1. Uh, Protocol 2 was a mess. And a lot of guys, even on the new, brand new Anons, they are not running Protocol 2. They're running Protocol 1. Uh, they've got that foobard. Um, I actually got the blue screen of death on this thing, running Protocol 2. And granted, this radio is a little old. It's getting, uh, it's getting older now. So, um, yeah. So your equalizer is accessed here. And what I do with the equalizer, sometimes I will activate it. And if I'm trying to hear a weak station, I will actually roll the mid-range up a little bit and then kick the EQ on, and it will help me pull them out. But normally, I don't use the Anon for weak signal work. Um, I, I just... This is an armchair copy rag chewing uh, radio. <laughs> I know a lot of guys use them for DX and contesting. I would never use it for that personally. Um, 
the 7300 kicks its ass right around the block with the, with uh with an outboard uh 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 decent SDR uh dongle uh just the control you get and stuff like that and and all the stuff you can do with it very very easy with the other software especially console and uno but i'm not going to get into that that's all i'll say that's just my experience mileage may vary look at all haired up everybody so uh anyways uh so that's where the equalizer is uh, i'm gonna go and get the setup window open so again i am coming into um an external sound card so the audio is being fed to the anon through a sound card not through uh not direct from the rack into the back or the front of the radio so um let's see we'll go to the audio tab uh i'm running of course on the vac uh, it's a 192 kilohertz card and from what i understand i can really i should be able to really wind this up uh, and tighten everything up so that I, it, there's virtually no latency. I was listening to a couple guys talk about it on uh, 3630 a couple nights ago or days ago. And uh, one of them has pretty much no notice, no noticeable latency, I guess. But he's got things really dialed in tight. Uh, like I said, this is down and dirty. So uh, take a look at that. Uh, the VAC, these are my settings. This really doesn't have a... a <clears throat> excuse me, a lot to do with audio. Uh, the primary, I don't have a VAC2 running. Um, so let me show you where my filters are at. This is, a, this is for the display. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else there. Uh, display, RX1. I am running two re both receivers simultaneously. Um... Uh, D here's here's a kicker. Um, uh, the gentleman that sent me a uh, uh, email mentioned he said he's got this weird phasing sound, and <clears throat> I had that, but it was on receive, so I don't know if he's referring to it on transfer or receive. And one of the guys on thirty six thirty said, "No, you got to change this, the filter type to low latency." And see, I was using this down here, this multi RX. This brings in the the NFED that I use for receive as well. And so I'm mixing both of them right here um, in this area. I both have them, I have them both panned to the center, and they're in the transmit and the receive antenna are, are receiving simultaneously. Um, and when you do that, it gets really weird. Uh, it sounds like a big phasing problem happening. So this will fix that. Uh, click that to low latency. Uh, transmit here we go so these are my transmit settings um, I have a bunch of transmit filters as you can see down here I have uh, ESB AK uh, ESSB 8k 7k 6k uh, 4.5k I have a DX 2800 uh, 4k 3.6k ESSB stroke DX 3K. These are all custom filters that I put into um, right here. I created them right here. And you'll notice my transmit filter, even on uh, uh, 4 kilohertz, I have the low set to 20. I want the whole audio spectrum going out. Uh, I don't want that set to 100 or anything. That's bogus because, uh, you know, uh, I want that freaking guttural bottom end. Uh, so that's where you get that on TX. Uh, even, uh, let's see, where is my, I don't know if this will change. Will it change? Yes, it did. So let's go to 3 kilohertz. Where's my 3 kilohertz? 2.9. Yeah, see, 2.9, I have it set at 100. So I don't, I don't want that uh, for DXing. To me, that's wasted energy. Um, one thing about the Anon, and I think this is pretty much verified to be true, uh, it does have uh, pre-distortion, uh, pure signal. And you'll notice the Anon on, Anons on the pan adapter uh, will be, there won't be hardly any, there shouldn't be any IMD. Uh, it should be straight lines 
coming up each side of the pass band. I mean, literally sheer vertical lines. And what that does is it forces all of your energy into the pass band. Any IMD you get on the outside of the pass band is wasted energy. Nah, that can be disputed. You know, listen to stations at 50 over that have IMD splattering, you know, 20K wide. <laughs> There's plenty of energy going out. But it may have something to do with the audio characteristics of the Anon. Um, you know, and I'm not going to get into a pissing match as to what radio is the best radio to use because I don't really care. Um, but that's just one feature of the Anon that I think is a factor. So, uh, let's see. Uh, my 8K, yeah, uh, 8 kilo, 20 kilohertz to 8 kilohertz. Um, now, he made reference to... monitor TXAF what did he make reference to I'm looking here um, oh that's one thing I was going to show him uh, so actually let me uh, kick the dummy load in I'm going to kick the dummy load and I'm going to do this for, for him uh, let's see my D noise gate is active downward expander is on set to minus 60 and mic gain is at 30 db so i'm going to go ahead if you look up here in the top right hand corner i'm going to go through these meters um uh there was a that's right he asked about the leveler um Where are you? I thought it was in here. Leveler. Uh, see, I haven't looked in here in freaking months. <laughs> if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't fuss with it. Um, where the heck? For late C... Ah, oh, crap. Anybody, anybody having a non know where the leveler is? Okay. General. Limits, uh, that's not relevant. Audio. Uh, what was in general? ADC. ADCs. There are so... Process, process. See, I should, I should bump that up, but it ain't broke. I'm gonna leave it. Uh, I have the uh, okay. Step attenuator is enabled. Tune. Okay, mouse tune step. Snap click tune. Crap's not in there either. Attenuate on TX is checked. Apollo's on. Filters. RX2. Let's go back. Hmm. Okay, I went through that whole sequence there. Went through this sequence. Let's go to display. Uh, it's not going to have anything to do with the display. Oh, TX. Uh, display grid. No, that's all display stuff. Um, DSP. Okay, options. CW, AGC, ALC. <sighs> AM sound. It doesn't matter. Uh, audio RX1 I'm doing this so he can he can go through and he can stop the video and compare his settings uh, let's see EER all this stuff I have no idea what this stuff does I do not touch it <laughs> I played a lot with the uh, noise reduction system on here and I've even asked gurus and they're like I don't know you got us man we played with it too and we can't figure it out so 
Um, it's a shame. It's got a lot of parameters you can set up in it, but I've messed with that a lot, and pff, who knows. Um, uh, manual notch filter, noise blinker. Uh, so, okay, those are, your, uh, those are your EQs. As you can see, I have no EQ running on the Anon, on transmit. Uh, everything's done outside. So if we go to the transmit tab again, uh, PA setting, appearance, keyboard, cat, uh, that's all useless in regards to audio. So that looks like it's pretty much it in there. I don't know where that leveler is though. Hmm. There was some place I saw that and I can't figure it out. Uh, go across the top, equalizer, transverters. Uh, diversity, we know what that is. Um, linearity, that's used for uh, generating your two-tone signals for diversity and stuff like that. Uh, oh, radio astronomy. Eh. All right, so that's pretty. Uh oh. Oh, I changed the mode, didn't I? <laughs> um. Yeah. So that is pretty much it. I mean, I don't know what to tell him in regards to. I am going to show him where my uh, mic levels are. So let me. Um. I'm going to turn. Get the dummy load in. I'm going to go ahead and put the drive at zero. Start. Uh, we're still getting receive. Okay, diversity is off. So let's go to. Okay, so I'm going to kick on, uh, I'm going to show them where the mic level is. So, uh, of course, I need the uh, foot switch plugged in. It's on the other radio. And there we go. Okay, we got, uh, yep, we're up around, oh, at the peaks, we're la, 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 yep, 0 0.5 point. It should be somewhere close to zero. And we are at 8K, so let's reel that in. Let's put it at 4K, so we're on... Uh, I'm zoomed in too far. Okay, there's 4K. Uh, so, yep, we're at 0.5 dB on the mic gain. Um, if you look at my signal on the spectrum, I can zoom it out just a tiny bit. Oh, my drive level's at 30. I don't need to do that. So let's bring it down to like, I wonder if pure signal will kick in at 5. Uh, we'll see a pure signal. No, there is. It's having a problem correcting, but we're not going to pay attention to that. It needs a little bit more drive to work. Um, so if you look at the spectrum here, uh, I've got a decent amount of top end in the audio uh, going out. And there, if you look at where this spike is down here, this is down around probably 60 hertz, somewhere in there. Uh, so there's a good amount of bottom going in. And I wanted, uh, I want, I like that kind of, cardboard ripping sound you know when you rip a piece of cardboard love that um, so I tend to run I don't run a, a big dip in the mid-range um, a lot of times you'll see guys uh, this will this will be up here and then like the mids and highs will be way down here I don't it it hurts you unless you're um, you know unless you're 40 over you can get away with it but you know if the signal's kind of weak you're you, you gotta you do you need to flatten things out a little bit because people have a hard time hearing you um, just my experience mileage may vary keep saying that so uh forward sd leveler there we go uh so we got the leveler right here so the leveler is active and you can see that it's trying to it's trying to keep it up around that zero db area uh, so that's and that's what you want to see on the Anon. You want to see it, eh, you know, one minus one to um, on the peaks, maybe. Well, there's a point three, uh, somewhere in there around zero dB, you know, uh, audio, audio, audio. Yeah, there's point one. So on the strongest inflections of my voice, yeah, and actually my uh, mic gain is down a little bit. So let's bring that up. 
uh, zero dB. So there we go. Now we got zero dB pretty consistently. So uh, control your drive on the Anon uh, with the external rack and uh, set your mic gain appropriately. Uh, make sure the level, I don't know where the freaking leveler is. <laughs> I tried to find it and I can't find it. Uh, a, okay, here's the ALC. Uh, ALC right now is uh, my audio. Check one, two, audio, uh, 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 audio, audio, audio. So the ALC is running about minus seven dB somewhere in there. Oh, there's minus five. Uh, so yeah, it's floating in there somewhere. Um, uh, yeah, so there's no clipping happening. So, you know, take it for what it's worth. All right, uh, ALC comp. So let's go back to, set it back on SWR. Um, the leveler, good Lord. Uh, let's get back. Um, so anyways, anybody know where the leveler is located? <laughs> I'm probably looking right at it, but I just can't find it. Um, uh, enable VAC, uh, mono stereo. Hmm. I know that I know the leveler is running. But I just can't remember where it was. I wonder if I wonder if it was in the initial setup. You know, use drive power. Maybe it's called something else, and it, I'm just not seeing it. I don't know, uh, but uh, maybe by default it's running. I, I can't tell you, but there you go. Anyways, that's it for that, folks. Uh, I'm going to blast down through the chat and make sure there's no questions, any Anon guys or regarding anything I just mentioned, and then I'm out of here because I'm tired. <laughs> so, uh, let's see. We got Andy, Carl, how's it going? There's John Boy, Michael from Sweden, Bill, good to see you, man. Um. JJ the jet plane. And okay. Good. Pretty pretty dead uh pretty good. I ain't touching it, Anthony. When someone tells me I sound better than NU9N, I ain't touching it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what you're hearing in the stream is not what comes out of the radio. I uh, just got through saying that. Um, these things need to be force fed. Uh, they do not transmit what you're hearing. If you were to monitor directly out of your rack, which I am, it will not sound the same coming out of the rig. Even the Anon, it does not sound the same. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. Anyways, I'm freaking gone, man. Uh, hopefully... Hopefully he finds this useful. If he doesn't, I did my best. <laughs> Dan, you goon, what is up? Uh, I'm gone. Have a great evening, you guys. Uh, have fun, and we'll catch you soon. Bye.